Welcome to this GP feature overview for Microsoft Dynamics GP Analytical Accounting. I'm Devin Southall from Software Solutions Group and today I will be showing you why you might want to use analytical accounting. So why? Do you need greater detail in your financial reporting? That's the $10,000 question. If you want greater detail in your financial reporting, you have two options. Option number one is you add additional GL accounts. And the second option is that you use analytical accounting. And here I go through sort of the pros and cons. Um, obviously, you will notice that this is really showing why analytical accounting is sometimes preferable over adding additional GL accounts. The reasons being is that you only need to add the dimension to certain accounts. You don't have to have a segment on all accounts. Um, and a specific GL account can have one dimension, multiple dimensions, or no dimensions. Um, segment values don't have to be consistent length. They can be logical, alphanumeric, and up to 30 characters. Um, dimensions can be easily inactivated and disappear from the looking lookup lists. Reporting in Management Reporter is pretty simple and in most places in JP you can require it. Um, it's totally standard in AP, AR, Sales Order Processing, Inventory, GL. It's more depending on what version you are, does it work in Fixed Assets, Payroll, some of those other modules. So let's let me show you a little bit about what analytical accounting, how it works and what it can do for you. The other pro to analytical accounting, it is the core or the workhorse behind grant management. So if you're a nonprofit and you want to track grants, you will need to use analytical accounting for that. Here I am in Microsoft Dynamics GP 2013 Service Pack 2. I am on the Financial tab over here. And analytical accounting is found typically under Financial. So if I look under here under Cards and I scroll down, I will see analytical accounting. I can go this way and go to financial and there's analytical accounting. So let's talk about some of the terms that you see in analytical accounting. The first one is the dimension. So the dimension is the thing you want to track. So I have two dimensions set up. I have grant which I have tied into grant management and I have IT. So if I look under IT um, there's just a couple setups here. Can someone create a code on the fly if they have permissions for that? Are they allowed to make adjustments to it? But let's go look at the code. So I can hit the codes here or I can hit transaction dimension code. So here is where I set up the values. So under the dimension of IT, I have four different values set up. I have phone upgrade, I have GP, I have a GP upgrade, and I have windows and offices. These are the codes, notice there's inactive active. These are the codes that can be quickly inactivated and that's one of the benefits we talked about. So again, you can set up multiple dimensions, multiple codes. You can also tree your codes, which we'll look at a little bit later, but if I look at my GP here on my node, I actually have the IT treed into categories and so some of the reporting within GP allows you to sort of tree these. Another option is you have codes that are children of codes and then that's where the validation comes in. There's a lot of power to analytical, I'm showing you the most simple setup. So then under that, the next thing is something called an accounting class. Um, the accounting class says that for the IT class, you are required to put in an IT code and you're not allowed to put in a grant code. So I might set up a third class that both of them are required. Um, and then in the accounting class link, this is where you start flagging GL accounts. So these specific GL accounts, whenever they're used in the system, we are now required to enter an IT code in order to post it. That's the power behind the module. So let's see how that looks in a transaction. So I am going to go to Payables. I could also go to GL. You can see either of those. Give me a second here and I'm going to put in a transaction. Alright, so here I am in Payables Transaction Entry. I've put in a transaction to a vendor and I have put in one of my GL accounts that is analyzed. So here I am going to tab off the GL account line and you will notice that the analytical accounting screen pops up. I also could open it. Whoops by hitting this little analytical icon here, but it does pop up automatically. So here it is saying the amount of 500 
what code do I want to put it to? So I can put it all to one code, or I can divide it up by putting in a different amount. So I'm going to divide this one up. I'm going to put it half to phone upgrade. So notice now it says that half is assigned and half is not assigned. And then I'm going to put the other half to Windows and Office. Now it says it's fully assigned, and if I scroll up here, you can see I have the two different codes, and if I can click between the one and the other, I see the two different codes. I can validate here, but if I hit OK or save, it's going to try to check some basic validation. Do I have access to these codes? Are the codes inactive? For grant management, it adds additional checks here for um, budgets, more validation. And now I hit OK. And I can go ahead and post this transaction like normal. It works identical in GL and other places in the module. OK, so now that we've got the transactions in, how do we get our reporting out? A couple different options. First one is there are smart lists. So um, there's a couple AA smart lists. I can look at transactions. So if I sit here and refresh, there's transactions here. Um, that's some basic information. The next is management reporter. Let me show you that. So here in Management Reporter, I have set up the company to have analytical. And if I look at my tree, you will see that my dimensions are pointing to each of my grant values. And if I show a report, you will see that my tree of my values, I can look at it in summary or each individual grant. Again, IT would work identical. The other options is you can put this on your row format. So here in my row format, if I click on my link to financial dimensions, you'll notice that my grant and my IT, my dimensions, are now available to have values put them in. So you can put it in your row format, your column, your tree, same as any other segment in your GL account. Back here in GP, we have some inquiry wizards. There's a query wizard, which allows you to quickly get out distributions based on a particular query. I can store the query, specify the periods that I want detail for, and finish it. And it'll pop right out in Excel. Here's my distribution query out of the wizard. All the detail, sortable. Next, I can show you a um, multi-analysis query, or a multi-level query. And remember those trees I showed you earlier? This is where those come in. So let's pop into that. We're going to execute an existing query. There's my IT query. Put in my period. Fill in my comments. Hit finish and it will pop up in Excel. And here's my multi-level query in Excel where I can expand my pluses and see additional details that I had in the query. And I can tweak what level I want these all in that query builder. So again, that's some of the power behind analytical accounting. There is a lot more pieces. You can put bunches of dimensions. You can tier them. You can put in budgets. There's all sorts of stuff. But that's a little overview of why you may want to consider analytical accounting for greater detail in your financial reporting without basically blowing up your chart of accounts with zillions of accounts that you have forever that you may no longer need. I hope you have enjoyed our presentation of why analytical accounting. Thank you.